It's the shortest minute yet. Uh, that was the last one minute interlude thing. So uh, to finish off PipaCon, we have uh, Laura. Take it away, Laura. Hi, how y'all doing? Uh, so I'm Laura. Um, I run a little tiny feral security startup called SafeStack. Uh, I wrote a book after getting very drunk on tequila. And I'm a lot of other things. And the other things are way more important. I'm a mom and a sister and a friend. And I'm here today, I'm going to use Joe's words from earlier, say I'm excited to be here. I'm excited because I haven't given a security talk to a security audience in four and a half years. And uh, that's a bit of a big thing for me because it turns out introverts forget how to pretend to extrovert. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well, I want to talk about a few problems we have and some opportunities for being here, right now, here in New Zealand. The way we think, the way we behave, and how it affects how we do security and some opportunities. And by the end of this, I want to give you something. There is uh, a thing with PurpleCon where the speakers are encouraged to give something actionable at the end. And I have a mission for each and every one of you. So spoilers, homework ahead. I am that super fun presenter. But you'll love me for it in the end. That or you'll avoid me, whichever. So you are here. You're here in Wellington, New Zealand. Whether you were born here or, like me, you found your way here for the day or for the week, or for forever. It doesn't matter. The security world you live in is here, right now, in this space. In that space, a tiny little island in the middle of nowhere that people from certain parts of the world have no idea about at all. We are nestled lovingly between Ireland and some parts of Africa that you probably aren't aware of. When it comes to scale of things, we are tiny. And that tiny is beautiful. But it's also challenging because we're a tiny island that dreams big dreams and builds big things. So what impact does that have on our security, that we're a tiny island with big dreams? Well, most of our security guidance doesn't come from here. The voices we listen to, the conferences we watch, the videos, if we don't uh, go luckily ourselves, come from other places, mainly places like the US, big places. Places that look very different when we compare the numbers, when they're measuring their people in the hundreds of millions. Now, if you watched anything to do with the Indian election in the last 12 months, you see the scale of the problem. We talk about online voting as a, a situation we should consider. P.S. We shouldn't. Um, but in India, they had to try and get 800 million people to vote over seven weeks. Just logistically, there are challenges these countries on this list here are facing we do not understand, and that's OK. So it's dangerous when we take our security advice from them. It's not bad advice, but it's complex. Raise your hand if any of you are unlucky enough to have inherited the NIST framework as your guiding light. <laughs> Praise be NIST. Um, it is a big, heavy framework. It is an American framework. It is built for a company with several hundred million people who have several hundred million problems. We are different here. We are smaller. Our average security team size is 1.2 people. We have more people employed in rafting engagements, as in guides on rafting in places like Rotorua, than we do in the security industry. So, that's quite an interesting space when some of you have inherited NIST. We have an economy that is primarily focused outwards on tourism and selling to people who aren't already here, on the dairy industry where we sell our products out into the world. So we inherit these challenges of having to meet the requirements of big countries from a little island in the middle of nowhere. Now, this is from yesterday. I went looking. How many information security jobs are there available in the US compared to New Zealand? In New Zealand, we have 565 as of yesterday. In the US, now I'm guessing there's some duplication, but they have 54,780. Whew, we have a scale problem. So is this biasing our security approach, right? We've inherited this guidance from big countries. These are the shoes we're trying to fill. Are we trying to do something we kind of should be doing differently? 
should we be making our security approach unique to us? Not that the challenges are different, but the way we approach life is different. The resources we have are different. So why don't we use what we are to fight the problem our way? The bias we've inherited from these US-based systems is changing what we're doing. We're focusing all of our security controls about environments that look like this. Now, I've been working in New Zealand now for eight years. My first job, and there's at least one person in the room who knows this, was penetration testing somewhere that does artificial insemination of bulls. It was not a standard office. You don't do that in a polite office. In fact, if you, oh, you got there then, congratulations. Whew. For those, um, if you've not come across Figure NZ before, if you really want to understand the data of our country, please go and check out their website and the amazing visualizations they give us to our open source data. This is a breakdown of our GDP by the areas that we do it in. Now, us office types, we're in that top bar, kind of, mostly, uh, about 20% of the country. And the rest, all of those other people are in everything else. Retail and agriculture and tourism and hotels and all of the things in between. Now, when we look again for the industries of employment, we see the same things. We've got a big bar at the top that's, you know, people in nice, polite environments, but then we have everyone else. Essentially, what it means is that we set our security controls based on polite offices, which represents about 20% of our population, which leaves about 80% of the companies, of the businesses, of the ways we are trying to thrive and survive and build our big dreams, our advice doesn't work for them. If you are an apple farmer on the South Island, you have an information security problem. But it's not one that's going to be solved particularly well by having Active Directory installed and well configured. The NIST controls didn't say, well, the count of your apples is the most important thing in the world, and that unsecured iPad that's in the shed in farm number three is actually your big chance for protection. Now, it sounds facetious, but it's true. Our entire Apple industry is based on the integrity of the count, the ordering pipeline that shimmers out of that, that ripples out from the ordering of boxes to the negotiation of contracts for buying and selling to the hiring of just-in-time or seasonal staff to the getting visas for said staff, all relies on the count of apples. The same is true for the oyster industry, for wineries, for our transportation, where we do have security issues that we've seen, like happen with Maersk in the last few years, where we have ransomware, brings it all to a halt. But what if your security is based on truck drivers making sure that their load is secured from people putting some kind of pest in there? These are our country's problems, not just the polite ones that look like a room with some desks and chairs and air conditioning. So what makes New Zealand different? Why should we be looking at this and seeing ourselves as a special type of hero, using our weird New Zealand way, which is weird and I love it, as something we should cherish? Well, New Zealand is a bit weird when it comes to securing anything. We're bad at it. Uh, even our nature is bad at it. We have frogs that never become tadpoles because they didn't have to run away from predators. We have birds that don't fly, they walk. And we have pretty much every plant and uh, species of fauna we have is ill-equipped to survive in the modern world. But somehow, we protect them. One after another, we hunt down frogs and we make sure they're safe. We take fluffy little birds and we lovingly caress their eggs until they have more little birds. And then we celebrate it. We're used to solving weird security problems. Now, we don't have the, the culture of adversarial interaction that places like the US and Europe do. I'm not going to say we should get that. Please don't bring that here. But we should perhaps look at some of the ways we've already been doing this and adapt. Now, how does this culture affect our security? Little plug to uh, Pepper Raccoon, who makes amazing pins. You should buy her stuff. Also, I didn't steal her image, it's even quoted. I don't do that often. Well, let's look at some of our vulnerabilities, because we are vulnerable. We trust really easily. How many of you open the door for people and just don't even think about it? Yeah, you'd share your barbecue with the person who walked down the street just because they smiled and they looked nice, and you liked the color of their t-shirt, and there was a rugby game on, and you met them at a pub, um, and that's wonderful. 
we trust in this space. You're in a space with strangers, and yet you are trusting and sharing and collaborating. That's a wonderful thing. We have less defensive response here. We're good at defending against natural disaster, but when it comes to online attack, we're not very prepared. We're slower to adapt to changing threat. And it's not an insult. You know, step one to any kind of journey, right, is know where you are, and this is where we are right now. But there's some pros to this. There are advantages to who we are and how New Zealand is and how it thinks. We are willing to adapt. That number eight wire thing is both a blessing and a curse. It's wonderfully uh, awesome for improvisation. We make things up. We script things. We try. How many of you have just gone, oh, screw it. I don't have a tool for this. I'll just make something up. <laughs> Absolutely, you have. Um, it may have worked. It may not have. But you had a great adventure doing it. We are less interested in perfectionism here. People are kind of, she'll be right, and that's OK. We're prepared to take risk, because risk is part of our environment. We literally live on top of volcanoes and fault lines. We're OK with that. But it does mean, historically, sometimes we compromise on quality. Now, if you've been reading the news, the things about buildings in Taranaki and New Plymouth in the last 24 hours, there's a cost. And we need to balance that. When we're adapting this security mindset based on our thinking, we need to balance our good and our bad. We may leave projects unfinished. How many of you are a starter, but perhaps not a finisher? Hmm. Yeah, that might be me too. We underestimate complexity. Raise your hand. Yeah. We need to be embracing these bits of us and turning it into a superpower. I talk a lot in my talks and in my classes about becoming meerkats, about collaborating, working together. And I want to take that a little step further today. I want to become the New Zealand collaborative security force. Um, and not in a silly commercial way. I'm not here to talk to you as SafeStack. I'm here to talk to you as Laura. Laura, who builds a career, who has a family, who wants to protect the things around her. I want us to work on our vulnerabilities. I want us to stop compromising on quality and start finishing some things. And to do it, I want us to embrace some standards. Not complex standards. I really like the risk management talk earlier. We talked about half-assing it, just enough. We need just enough of a standard that we get there. And that means picking the right ones from a very broad selection and actually saying no sometimes. We're not going to do that one. It doesn't make sense here. We're going to openly talk about complexity. I love this conference because it encourages us to share and talk about our vulnerability and what went wrong and what we learned. And I want you to do more of it, even if you're not the person who would speak on a stage like this. I want you to find the group of people you feel safe to say, this security problem is really freaking hard, and I do not know what I am doing. Because every single one of you faces that moment in your professional life. And by having that open discussion about it, we get better. If we pretend we're not making it up as we go along, then we're going to kind of set ourselves up for failure. We're going to hold ourselves accountable for completion. Take those baby steps, the hygiene steps that are really unsexy, you know, the stuff like patching and passwords and all that jazz that we're like, oh, yeah, they're hard problems. We're going to do them little by little by little. And more importantly, you're going to do them for yourself, and you're going to help others around you, because that's the Kiwi way. We don't look after ourselves. We look after those who touch our lives, too. We're going to understand our risk more specifically. Now, if you happen to be working for an up-and-coming, high-growth startup that's going to take over the world with some multi-layered machine learning blockchain mega nightmare, then wonderful. You go NIST. You go nuts. I am happy for you. But actually, if you find yourself working for a small commu community organization, then start there. Understand what your risk is. If you work for the equivalent of an apple orchard, Figure out risk as it works for you, not what the US tells you risk should look like and that you need 20 people in your security team to fix it. Look at your world and develop the threat model for that. I want us to embrace our size and work together. I want us to be more collaborative, to reuse more, and I want us to automate more. And that comes to the homework part. As of today, as of about four hours ago, in fact, for anyone who sat watching me panically ma manage DNS earlier, opensecurity.nz open is a thing. Now, open security is going to aim to be a central point, a library, if you will, an index of all of the open source projects, 
tools, scripts, templates, and documents you lot have all been sitting on for your entire career. And I want you to liberally and joyfully share them. I want you to list them and not give over ownership. They're still your ugly baby. But we are going to put them in a central place so that people can find them, so people can use them, and people can collaborate and contribute, because we are too small to keep doing this on our own. Now, a few things. It's not commercial. That's why I'm very clear here. I'm not talking about SafeStack here. This is not SafeStack. This is open security. I am going to call out to you as a group. If you would like to volunteer to run this with me, I welcome all help. I am a mother of two small children. I am not afraid to ask for said help. It is a collaboration space. I do have a few rules. If you're going to submit something, you must be willing to have a code of conduct. There is a freely available template code of conduct. It's very easy and transparent, and I will help you put it in place. You must be licensed under an open source license. Now, that's Creative Commons for documentation type stuff or pictures. And for the tools and scripty types, then we'll look at things like the BSDs and all of that kind of jazz. Somebody in here will know much more about open source library stuff, and they will come and hug you with their knowledge at some point. Um, it has to have a readme file. I would like you to be uh, welcoming to new in, uh, contributors. That's all I'm asking and that you were creating it in New Zealand, you know, preferably. Uh, now, there are ways to get involved. Firstly, you can go to opensecurity.nz. It is a very basic holding page. It has got one project listed. Because I've added one today, I'm going to add another one tomorrow, because I'm giving another talk tomorrow with another new thing, because I'm dumb. So the first one listed is a security checklist project. So if any of you have ever built a checklist to remind you of how to do a job, you don't do very often, but you really need to know those steps, add your checklist. There is a template there for building a markdown checklist. There is an example one for grooming security requirements. You can get stuck in. I've also linked to the, if you've never done a pull request and that's new to you, there's a guide there for how to do that. So hopefully it is welcoming, and if I failed at that, please drop us an email to support at opensecurity.nz, and I will help you. And eventually, we will help you, because I want you to all join me. This isn't about conquering the world. This is nothing to do with me. We're creating the set of tools we all need to solve a problem in New Zealand that the US approach, this big country approach, won't work. So we're going to work together. Raise your hand if you're sat on a script or an open source tool that you know would be useful to someone else. Fabulous. Look around you. The people that you just saw raise their hands, if within the week they haven't filled in the little tiny form, <laughs> then you're to gently encourage them in the purple con friendly manner of sparkling them, like glitter, stickers, you know, high fives. Just encourage them. Because from small little steps like that, we're going to build up a community that is not just great for us people who are doing it now, but is a gateway for those who want to do it in the future, because it's a place they can start to contribute before they even have their first job. New Zealand is a special little place. We have some big security problems. We can't keep trying to emulate big countries. It's great to listen to Black Hat talks. It's great to look at all of these big conferences and go, yeah, that's awesome. But when we emulate it, we are crushed by massive standards that make no sense to our particular risk environment. So when you go back to your world, I want you to look at the skills and the traits of the people around you that make it wonderful to live here in New Zealand, that make us able to protect dumb frogs and birds that, by all rights, should have been extinct years ago, and turn that into a superpower to collaborate in a way that doesn't happen nationally elsewhere in the world. Work together, protect each other, and collaborate. And hopefully, we can bring an open and sharing security for the whole country. Okay, we're good.